Hello, good morning. We're live on the Trade Decorator Festival. Um, welcome to this morning's session. We have a, an exclusive product review from Nick Samet at Rushmore Painting and Decorating, who's one of our um, Trade Decorator product review team. Um, we've been working exclusively with Wagner to bring you a review of their brand new PP90 skid machine. Um, which is launching in the UK on the 1st of March. Now, if you're watching us over on um, Facebook, welcome to the session. There's still time to come and join us over on Crowdcast if you'd like to get involved in our Q&A later in the session, um, where we'll be meeting with Martin Regan from Wagner, and you'll get your chance to put your questions to Martin about the PP90 skid. Um, we we're also going to be launching a competition live in the session where you could win a HEA spray kit with an RRP of £450. So it's well worth coming over and joining us and getting involved in the session. Um, so welcome everybody and um, let's take a look at the review um, and I'll see you all in a few minutes. Hello and welcome, my name is Nick Samet from Rushmore Painting and Decorating. Today I'm going to be giving you a product review on behalf of the Trade Decorator product review team. The product we're looking at is the Wagner PP90 airless spray unit. This is the extra skid version. It's one of their newest entry level pro sprayers on the market. And in this review, I'm going to be giving you a few specs on the machine, uh, what it comes with in the box when you buy it, also showing you some footage of it in action, a few things I like about it, a few things I feel could be improved. Um, so stay tuned for all of that. But before we get stuck into the review, please subscribe to the channel, like, comment, let us know if you've used it, what your thoughts are. Uh, also, if you could hit the notification bell at the top, that would be great because that way any future content we upload, you'll be notified of immediately. So, without further ado, the Wagner PP90 LS spray unit, extra skid. So, as it says on the on the box as such, it's a skid version, it's a non-wheeled version, so it's quite low down, it's quite uh, compact. It's got a flow rate of 1.6 litres a minute, which is comparable to other airless sprayers in the entry level pro range um, category. It's price is about 800 pounds, so it's the same sort of price bracket as a lot of other sprayers in its category. And it weighs in at around 10 kg. Um, which is considerably light for, a, for an airless sprayer. I don't think anyone's going to struggle moving this around on the job. Uh, what comes in the box when you buy it is a 15 meter hose, which is a good length of hose for most work, meaning you can put the sprayer in one position and have the hose follow you around. It's got the Vector Pro gun. It comes with a guard and HEA Tip 517, this is a, um, an incredible tip. I love these HEA spray tips. They're my go-to ones for emulsions. It's got a bottle of Easy Glide throat seal for the patterns and stuff. It's also got a little pouch for the spanners that come with it for undoing hoses and guns and, and whatnot. And also it's got a pressure gauge, which is a HEA pressure gauge, which works in conjunction with the HEA tip as well. So you know where you are with, the, with regards to the pressure. Um, I'm gonna show you some footage of this sprayer in action before I tell you a few things I like and dislike about it. So you'll see what sort of um, work can be done with this type of little machine.
as you can see, it coped with all of those products really well. Um, it worked better than I thought it would. For a small, small machine like this, you normally have to thin out the material more than you would like to. And with those products, they're high viscosity products, especially the emulsions. And I only had to thin them out about 10%, 15%. Whereas from experience with smaller, smaller airless sprays like this, you have to sometimes thin them out more than that. Therefore, uh, compromising the quality of the product. But with this, it handled everything really, really well. Um, since that little bit of footage, I have sprayed top coats on the woodwork and it performs phenomenally with that as well. Uh, no issues there at all. So, the first thing I really like about this machine is that it's really lightweight. And at 10 kg, um, it just means that it's suitable for anyone um, to be able to carry it around and, and not have to struggle. Um, if you're parking your van quite away from the job, um, the fact that it's not on wheels means that you have to carry it and the fact it's lightweight is is, is beneficial. Um, the second thing I really like about it is that it's just really compact and sleek and most airless sprayers tend to look a bit like transformers. They've got bits poking out here, bits poking out there and it just, they can kind of be a bit awkward. And due to its weight and the, the fact that it's compact, it's, it's actually quite centralized. So a lot of the actual weight is right through the middle so it doesn't tip forward when you carry it or tip back or pull to one side. It's quite um, well balanced. Which is, which is good. And the fact it's quite comp uh, compact and sleek, when you come to clean it down, um, because everything's smooth, it's just nice to wipe down and easy to keep clean, which is another, another little feature I like about it. The third thing I really like about it is it just handled everything I, I use on a regular basis. So the emulsions, the primers, you know, everything like that, I know that it could handle it, which is reassuring because this sprayer is really going to be aimed at domestic use. You're not going to be taking this onto a building site and spraying thick, heavy fire retardant coatings and stuff like that. We'll be using it on a daily basis, spraying meters and meters of, of um, wall space and ceiling space. You're going to be spraying a room here, a room there, a bit of woodwork there, a ceiling there. So this sprayer um, can handle a lot for its size um, and its sort of category within the airless um, spray market. Um, so I was really impressed with the fact it could do all the things I wanted it to. Um, one little cool feature I like about it is just under here, there's a little um, ball release valve. So when you're cleaning an airless spare out, sometimes even if you clean it out really thoroughly, get all the excess paint out of it and the water's all running clear. And even if you use the, um, the, the proper cleaners, sometimes the ball can still stick. And what you have to do is when you come to use it the next time, maybe not the next day, but in a week or so, you have to give it a little tap with a spanner or a hammer, just lightly, just to help free up the ball. And it's not very professional and it could cause damage to the machine. But having this little ball here, ball release valve, you just give it a little push and that releases the ball and helps the, the machine prime up and, and load up the paint. And I just think that's a really cool little feature. And I think that should be industry standard. I know it's nothing new from Wagner, but I think um, a lot of manufacturers should follow suit because ones I've used before don't have that option and you have to give them a crack with a hammer and it's, as I said, not very professional and probably doesn't do the machine any good at all. Um, so they're the th things I really like about it and there are a few things I feel can be improved and the first thing is this suction hose assembly. I've got a few things about it I, I don't like and it's a bit of a love-hate relationship. Because it's a sleek plastic, it does clean down really well. So when you've got it in the paint for a day and then you come to take it out and clean it, normally you get like a paint build up at the top and sometimes if it's metal or rubber, that doesn't clean off as easily over time. But with this plastic, the paint doesn't adhere to it. So it's easy to clean, but it's really rigid and moving it around from tub of paint to water or tub of paint to another tub of paint, you actually have to lift the sprayer up or you know, kind of awkwardly angle it and then move it around which isn't a problem because the sprayer isn't heavy, but it just overcomplicates it. And I feel if that was rubber, or even if it was rubber up to the top bit there, and then the bend downwards was plastic, so you've got the easy clean option there, but also the flexibility up here, it would just make doing that process a lot easier and quicker. And the fact that it's rigid, and you're moving it around quite awkwardly, puts a bit of strain on this section down here. And I don't know over time how that would hold up, if it would break or crack or potentially damage it in any way. So the suction tube assembly is something I feel could be improved. And also the, um, the suction filter here, I had no issues with it, got a bit of water coming out of it. I had no issues with it 
in terms of performance, but because it's plastic, I feel that if you weren't paying attention, it was out about on the job site or whatever, and you stood on it, that would crack. And although if it was metal, it would still damage it, there'd be less chance of it actually breaking completely. So I feel the plastic could be upgraded to metal, making it a, a better overall section here. Um, and just, just changing that to maybe rubber, at least half of it to rubber, so you've got more flexibility with it. And also, when you're storing it, unless you take this assembly off, which you can only do with the main suction tube, you can't do with the, the priming tube, because the priming tube is a push fit, um, like valve thing and it's not easy to get off and if you did pull that out I think you'd probably damage the mechanisms for the push fit so you couldn't take this off all the time it sits like this which is quite you know it protrudes out quite far so having that option of maybe a flexible bit of rubber at the top or half of it you could then fold it back and strap it or keep it compact this side so I feel that's one thing that could be could be improved and also just quickly it would be good if there was a little wrap for the cable because you have to wrap it around the machine and that's awkward as well. It doesn't look too professional. I think that could be improved. Um, and the second thing I feel could be improved with the machine is what comes with it when you when you buy it. So it comes with the guard and the tip, a 517 HEA tip, which is great. But I feel they could also chuck in a fine finish tip for woodwork as well to kind of complete the package. Um, I think that would be a good thing. But um, overall, a really solid little machine. It did everything I wanted it to in the time I've used it. Over over a year or two years, I can't talk about how it's performed because I haven't had it that long, but um, I don't see why if you look after it, you clean it regularly, you keep, keep on top of everything, I don't see why it wouldn't perform continuously for you. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, really, really happy with it. Out of 10, I'm gonna give it a nine. I think um, it's a fair overall rating. There's a few things that could be improved. There are a lot of good features, of good things about it. It did everything I wanted it to. It's lightweight, it's compact and stuff, but suction tube and maybe a, a, a tip for woodwork would be uh, an addition to it as well. So yeah, nine out of 10 for the Wagner PP90 extra skid version. Um, thank you for watching our video. As I said at the beginning, please subscribe to the channel, like, comment, and also hit that notification bell. So anything that we upload in the future, you'll be notified of immediately. And thanks for watching, see you soon. Welcome back everyone. So that was our review of the Wagner PP90 skit. Um, if you are still watching us over on Facebook, there's still time for you to come and join us because we're gonna be joined live now by Martin Regan from Wagner and the session will end here on Facebook. Um, what I need you all to do is look beneath me on the screen, press the green button that says join Q&A and you will go through to the next session. Just follow the instructions through into that session and myself, and Martin will do a quick mic check and we will come and join you and take your questions in the Q&A. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to our live Q&A with Martin Regan from Wagner. Hello Martin, thanks for joining us. Hi Paula, thanks for asking. Um, as you all saw there, we did a review of the Wagner PP90 skid. Um, please feel free to comment in the comments box as we go along. If you do have a um, question you'd like to put to Martin, you can either type in the comments box that you'd like to come up on screen, or you can hit the ask a question tab beneath us on the screen and type your question in there. And I'll put those questions to Martin as we go along. Now, at the end of the session, we will be launching a competition live in this session to win a Wagner HEA spray kit and the um, recommended retail price is £450 so that's a fantastic prize there thanks Martin and thanks Wagner um, now Martin we were looking at the sprayer what paint can we use with the sprayer it'll spray the majority of paints that painter and decorators normally use so it'll spray everything from wood stains glosses undercloaks eggshells emulsions and smooth masonry paints it's easier to say what it won't spray so it won't spray flat paints textured masonry paints. It's not designed, as you said in the product review, to be spraying all day long every day. Yeah. It's it's a really good start unit. Okay, brilliant. And do I have to dilute the paint? If you're using something like a Dulux trade paint or a crowd tra crown trade paint, they're actually manufactured to be eased by about 10%. So I would thin it by 10%. 
the unit will spray the paint as it is, but you're just wasting your money. Yeah. Uh, you might find as well in the winter, you might need just a little bit more water in there just to get a bit more flow. Uh, the main thing is try and keep your paint warm in the winter. Okay, um, we've got questions coming in, which is great. It, um, Nick Turnbull says, is there a hopper available for this? Not at the moment, but it's due round about May time. Okay, um, and is it available in 110 volts? It isn't, no. It's for the domestic market. We've purposely not made it in 110 volts because it's not a machine for everyday use for site work. We've got plenty of other units that are 110 volts, but for your painter and decorator who's doing Mr. and Mrs. Smith's house, 230 volts, it's been made for them, it's what they've asked for, and it does the job perfectly. Okay, brilliant. And he just commented to say you'd like to see a rubber suction hose. I think that's something Nick touched on in the review. It's, it is. Um, we don't supply that unit with a rubber su suction hose. We've got rubber suction hoses for other units that would fit that, but that would have to be bought as a separate. Okay. Um, so we've got a question here from John Duplock. He says, oh, it's, sorry, we've already asked that. It says, can you get a hopper for it? We've already covered that. Um, and Mark Rigby says, what's the biggest recommended tip size? It's a 21 thou. Uh, so for that, you can be spraying smooth masonry paint. Uh, I wouldn't really use a 21 thou for emulsion, but you can do if you want, but you'd have to move very quickly. Okay. Um, is that the only tip size you'd use with it, or are there other tip sizes you can use, Martin? It, it comes with a 517 HEA tip. Our HEA tips are our low overspray tip, so it reduces the overspray. That's really good. And um, that's what you traditionally use for spraying emulsion paint, or some people prefer to use a 515. Uh, the tips that you use run anywhere from a 208 all the way through to a 5 or a 621. So there's a full, full range. Okay. And how long is the hose? And can I get a longer hose if I want one? The hose comes as 15 metres. Um, if you want to add two hoses together, you can. So that would give you 30 metres. It does take longer to clean the machine if you've got a longer hose. Uh, the beauty of a 15 metre hose is if you've got your unit in the middle of the job, it gives you a 30 metre area that you can work in because you've got 15 meters each side of it so yeah. most people tend to stick with the 15 meters but if they want a longer one it is available yeah okay brilliant um and how long does it take to clean the pp90 skid if you're using water-based paint and you want to clean it thoroughly if you allow yourself 10 minutes you'll get the job done no problem at all and as you get more experienced with it you'll cut that down to about five minutes oh that's that's good isn't it yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and all cleaning these things is a big concern. Um, Brian Dennett says, I'm not into spraying yet. So apologies for this question. Never apologize for a question, Brian. How long do you know what, how do you know what pressure you need to use for different paints? Or is it just trial and error? Right. With the PP90, it actually comes with a pressure gauge included with the kit. And on there, there's actually a banding, which is in green. And as long as your pressure is within that green, that is where you should be spraying. If you're at the bottom of the banding on the green, and you can actually see some lines or fingers in your paint, so it comes out and you can just see little lines in it, just turn the pressure up a little bit. But as soon as you get to the top of the banding, that's where you should be. That's, that's the optimum. Okay, and um, John Duplock says, can you get a smaller hose than 15 metres? We don't recommend it. We do a seven and a half metre hose, but if you use a seven and a half metre hose, you can actually get a pulsing in it because the hose works as a reservoir for the pressure. So when you're spraying, you'll actually see a spray pattern. It'll go from big to small. So it'll, it'll vary a little bit. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, now we're talking about how long it takes to clean it, and you talked about emulsion paints. What about if we're using, um, gosh, say, an oil based paint yeah, or something like based. that? Yeah, sorry, I lost <laughs> my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, um, the machine cleans a lot quicker with 
oil-based paints because you're putting a solvent through it and it just strips it through very, very quickly. You'll need about eight to 10 liters of solvent to clean your machine thoroughly, but you can save that solvent and reuse it again. And you use the correct solvent is the solvent that you would use for thinning the paint. So if it's white spirit, you use white spirits. If it was methylated spirits that you'd use to thin your paint, you use methylated spirits to clean it. Uh, best practices going forward though, if you're going to be using oil-based and water-based paints, if you can have two separate hoses and save one just for oil-based and the other one just for water-based, and it'll save you having any problems going forward. Oh, that makes sense. Um, Nick's just asking, is it a piston sprayer or a diaphragm? And is it easy to service yourself? It is a piston sprayer. Um, it is easy to service yourself. We recommend having it serviced by a service centre because then you're actually getting the full warranty on the unit, which is an industry uh, leader in the warranty because you get three years as standard. And if you register it online, you get an additional two years, which gives you a five year warranty on the product. And that's easy to do via the Wagner website. You just follow the links for the um, profit guarantee. Um, if you service it yourself, you're not actually covered under that warranty. That makes sense. Um, we um, looked at Nick doing um, a range, well, he demonstrated it on a range of different surfaces. What kind of jobs can you do with this unit, Martin? You can spray your woodwork, as, as Nick was doing, um, no problem at all. You've got to have the correct tip for it. You can spray your undercoats, your glosses, you can spray wood stains. So if you're out on sheds or fences or anything like that, it's, it's very good for that. Emulsion paint is what it was built for. It'll spray smooth masonry paint, not textured masonry paint. You wouldn't want to be spraying smooth masonry paint three or four days in a row because it really is working the unit at, at the top of its yeah. limit. But if you've got one house to do, it's absolutely fine. And then another house a month or two months later, no problem at all. So it, 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 it's a full range, really. Well, it's a great starter machine, isn't it, for somebody that's it, it, not it, it done really any is. spraying? Yeah. And Brian Dennett's asking, how often would it need servicing? I would recommend having it serviced at least every 12 months, depending on how often you're using it. So if you're using it three or four times a week, which is right at its maximum, I'd most likely have it serviced every six to six to nine months. Just to make sure you're keeping it at its peak performance. Yeah, it's it, it, it's a lot better to have the ser the machine serviced and it's always working when you want it instead of be halfway through a job and find out that you've overworked it and the piston or packings need changing. Yeah. You know, and then you've, you've got the downtime. That's not good if you're in the middle of a job, is it? And that's, that, that's <laughs> when I get phone calls. <laughs> um, Mark Rig Rigby says, is it a three filter system in the manifold and gun? It's not got a manifold filter. So there's um, a, a filter on the suction at the bottom, as Nick pointed out, and then also there's a filter in the gun. Uh, the gun filters, you can actually change them as well. So you can go from a very fine to a fine to a medium, which it comes fitted with, to a coarse. So you've got a full range that you can change. The filters are very easy to take out and change, and it's a me metal filter as well. So it is difficult yeah. to damage it. Okay, and how long do the tips and filters last? As long as you clean them. If you're just using them regularly, a, a tip or a filter should last you 12 months. If you spray an emulsion, as I said, three times a week, four times a week, I'd most likely say six months, possibly a little bit longer. And you know when it's starting to go because at the top and the bottom of your spray fan, you actually start to get a heavy line building up and that's when you need to change your tip. Okay, great advice. Um, Nick, comment, Nick Turnbull's just put a comment in. He says he can see himself using this as a second pump for woodwork, but would prefer a hopper for small quantities of paint. Um, he said it's small, compact and lightweight, ideal. It, 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 it really is a great unit. Um, we also do it on wheels as well, so it comes on a cart. 
which some people prefer. I, I know that wouldn't fit what Nick's after because he's waiting for the um, hopper to arrive. Yeah. But uh, on the review, somebody said that they weren't over keen on the suction tube, which to be honest, I find is very easy to use. And I find it's it's easy to lift the machine up and, and just put it into a new um, tub of paint instead of uh, swiveling a flexible hose where you can get paint going everywhere. Yeah. But with the with the cart model, it actually just leans back and you just put a new tub of paint straight underneath it. You know, so that, that takes out it takes it from a nine out of ten unit to a ten out of ten unit. That's brilliant. Well, um it, just another comment, a couple of comments coming in here. Nick says, Great tips from Wagner. I use the low pressure ones. Um, and um, Wagner have just put comments in saying the unit will have a five litre hopper option available from May onwards. So you will be able to get that hopper, Nick. You'll just have to wait a little bit longer than when the machine launches at the beginning of March. Um, so um, if my if, if the spray is not priming or spraying, what what's the cause of this? What would you do? Right, so if... If you're spraying and all of a sudden it stops spraying, the first thing to do, and, and this might sound absolutely daft, is just check that you've got paint. Um, if by any chance the suction tube has come out of the paint, it will have sucked some air in and it won't spray. So therefore you have to make sure the suction tube is covered in paint and then reprime it again. If the unit won't reprime, or you go to start the unit first thing in the morning, it won't prime, 99% of the time, it's the bottom ball at the bottom of the piston that is stuck. And as Nick said on his review, what he really likes is there's a little red button that you push. And it's just a button, you push it, and it's just a pin that just comes up and just knocks the ball off its seat, and then it should yeah. start working. I don't really like to say anything about our competitors, you know, because they, they do good units. Uh, they supply their unit with a hammer. So yep. you can actually just tap it and that frees the ball. Personally, I think a little pin just, just nudging it off is a lot better. Um, and it saves you getting angry with the machine and hitting it too hard. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> it's even whacking the hell out of something. <laughs> yeah. Um, frustration. Yeah. Brian Dennett says, as a beginner, would I be better off having a hopper or a suction tube? What work are you looking at doing, Brian? Because if you're looking at spraying mainly emulsion, you'd be better with a suction tube. If you're looking at using it more for woodwork or smaller jobs, a hopper is better. A hopper's a lot easier and quicker to clean as well. You know, so, but if you're doing a large area, it, it, it's a lot easier to just uh, put it straight into 10 litres of paint and just suck it out. So Ideal world, as somebody, as Brian's just said, both. Yeah, I was just going to say, he said he'd be doing both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hopefully that help, will help you make your decision, Brian. I, um, I, I would think when the hopper comes out, there will be some promotions on that unit where you might get the hopper free of charge. Okay. Um, you know, so, uh, May, May's not too far away. Yeah, it might be worth waiting until May, Brian, if you want the hopper. Um, Larry O'Donovan is asking, do you know if it's available in Ireland? It is available in Ireland, yes. Oh, fantastic. And how much is it and do you sell it direct? We don't sell direct. We only sell through our distribution centres so you can get it through the paint channels. So you can get it through Brewers, Crown, uh, PPG, which is Leyland Johnson. And then we've got a full range of service centres all over the country. Um, the service centres are, are great because they service the unit for you as well. But if you do buy it from any of the paint channels, so your Crown, your Johnsons, your Brewers, we will arrange to collect it from those stores, take it to a service centre and get the unit service for you. It's very, very straightforward and very easy. You just need to put it in a box. Oh, that makes it nice and easy, doesn't it? It, it does, yeah. Yeah. Well, that brings me to the end of my questions. If anybody else has any other questions that they'd like to put to Martin, if you want to quickly type those in um, before we finish, what I'm going to do now is launch our competition um, for that HEA spray kit, um, which is valued at £450. 
All you need to do if you want to enter is click that button that says enter competition, fill in your details and all our competition draws will be done at the end of the festival. Um, good luck everybody and thank you Martin for joining me. I have a pleasure. I, I just see Paul's just put a little mes message up just saying good to see me. It's good to see you Paul. Hope Lincoln's still keeping well. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> okay, then. Thanks, Paula. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Martin. And Pleasure. If you, if you do want to join any of our other sessions and you've not registered for them, we are here every day, right through till Friday. I think our last session is at 6 o'clock Friday night. I will pop a link in at the bottom of this session so that you can just click on that and register for any of the others you might like to attend. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and I'll see you all later on this afternoon. Thanks, Martin. That's great. Thanks, all. Cheers. Bye now. Bye-bye.